So in my last video, I mentioned I'd come back to this site in a couple of weeks and figure out which one of my panels is bad because we identified um, input number two on this power converter as having no voltage. Uh, but actually, it's not a couple of weeks, it's the very next day. So when I got home, I went onto Amazon because so I wanted to order uh, some of these uh, connectors and make myself a bypass cable. Uh, so this type of connector is called MC4, M for Mother, C for Charlie, MC4, and it's standard across the solar industry. Um, all of my panels, uh, of course, uh, have this type of connector. And uh, the first thing I did was look up uh, my panel specs. I got the, ser the um, uh, serial number and looked up the uh, panel specs. And my panels use 4mm cable. There seems to be two standards from what I've learned. There's 4mm and 6mm. And your large scale industrial farms, you know, your mega solar farms, uh, which are handling much higher voltages, they'll be using 6mm. Your small scale farms or your you know, rooftop installations will be using panels like I've got here. And they use 4mm. So I was going to buy some of these connectors and a bit of 4mm cable and then make my own bypass cable. But then I saw this. Um, so this came as a set. There's two cables here. Each one is three meters long, and they're, they're all you know ready wired, good to go. And this was only two thousand yen, which is ten quid for the pair. And Amazon was doing overnight delivery on this, so um, I could see from my email notifications that uh, this was put into my letterbox at half four in the morning. So that's perfect. Um, I only need one cable to, as a bypass cable. Um, so I've got three meters length, and because um, uh, they're both the same, then I can just chain them together. So I could actually have a six meter uh, bypass cable if required. So that's brilliant, right? Um, uh, now we can figure out which, cable, which uh, panel is down. Um, and at the same time, um, last night I watched a couple of uh, very good videos on YouTube about MC4 connectors. Um, it's always good to know uh, a bit of information when you're dealing with something for the first time. It's nothing complicated, but there's a few interesting uh, little features about them uh, where it's easy to make mistakes for the first time. So I learned a lot. And these are the typical types of spanner that you need to install your own connectors. Again, this was overnight delivery. Uh, this was 700 yen, so what's that, 3 quid, 4 quid, nice and cheap. These are metal ones, they're a bit tougher than the standard plastic ones. So I don't actually need these because I'm not uh, putting my own connectors um, onto the cable because I bought the ready-made one. However, after watching the video um, and watching the way that these connectors should be put on, I've realised that there's quite a lot of the connectors at this site which are put on poorly. Um, so, you only find out later. Um, uh, there's quite a lot at this site and my other sites as well, which I've come to realise now, you know, we're done on the cheap. Um, as I've been crawling around over the years uh, underneath them, I found loads of bolts which were never actually secured properly. Um, you know, it's, these guys don't care, do they? So, later, um, I'll show you uh, how these spanners work and I'll show you a couple of connectors I've identified which I think are not done properly and I can uh, fix them up properly with these. So uh, the only other thing I bought with me today was I, I remember to bring some cable ties so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cut these cable ties off and separate the cables out so it's a bit easier to see on camera what I'm doing. So I've been cutting cable ties off uh, which I mentioned yesterday I couldn't do so I forgot to bring replacement cable ties with me um, and this is input number two so you can see I was correctly following it yesterday but then the first interesting thing to note is that somehow yesterday I tried my best but it looks like I somehow switched to following the wrong cable um, so that probably explains why none of those panels looked bad yesterday is because none of them were bad so um, I was always a bit suspicious um, of making sure I had the right cables because they were bundled up so tightly and I really couldn't see uh, which was which. Anyway, so now I can be sure. So I'm going to follow this set of cables through now, um, remove all of these cable ties, and then identify the correct array of panels. Um, and then once I've identified that, um, I'll turn the camera back on and we can do another visual inspection. 
So now that I've removed all those cable ties, it's super easy to follow these cables through and this time I'm 100% sure that I have the right pair of cables. So I've been tracing it through and I've already found something suspicious when I hit the first panel. So if you look at this connector, you can see that it's a bit melted and twisted. So I mentioned that I watched a couple of videos about these MC4 connectors and they're really not complicated, but there's uh, a couple of um, points which anyone working with them should know. Uh, the first one is you never bend it this close to the connector um, due to the way the crimp is and the, um, the pole and the socket is in here. You never bend it this close. You're likely to disconnect it halfway or you'll um, have a bad connection. And the second rule is that you never unplug or plug these in under load because if you do, this is exactly what happens. You get this um, spark and they melt a bit and um, bugger up. So this is complete amateur hour. Um, this is, uh, which is rather disappointing when you know you pay so much money for something. And to be honest, it's not surprising. I mean, anyone who's been in Japan for a long time knows that you'll get uh, a nice guy in a suit as a salesman. Company has a great image, but the actual work, um, the actual labor is outsourced three or four times through various companies. And at the end of the day, it's some useless fuck who turns up to do it. Um, so I can, I mean, I've seen these guys, they're the typical, you know, dumbass Japanese construction worker. Uh, no offense meant to the good ones, but most of you are fucking rubbish. Um, baggy trousers, dye their hair orange, those guys, right? You know, the, you, anyone in Japan knows exactly what I mean. So, um, this is not good. And the third rule, which they've always broken, if you look here, you see this screw thread. This is the waterproofing end. This screw thread should not be sticking out that much. Using those spanners, which I showed earlier, this should be all the way down. Now, on all the connectors around my site, almost all of them look like this. I can't find any which are actually screwed all the way down. Some are a little bit better than this. So, um, that's not a massive problem. That just means the waterproofing is less than it should be. Um, I don't think that's a big issue. Uh, but this connector is definitely bad. So I'm going to follow through the rest of this array and then we'll do a visual check on those panels from the front um, and then we'll figure out a way of bypassing this connector somehow and see if that can solve our issue. So I've removed all of the cable ties now and this is that first panel uh, which had the bad connector and the array goes down these four, it goes across to this one and up here and I trace the output cable from here and it goes all the way back and completes that loop into input number two. So um, I've marked uh, this panel with a bit of tape. Uh, I'll pop around now and have a look at these panels. I'm not expecting anything wrong. I really suspect that it's this connector here. Um, and as I went through um, and did remove things, I mean, I mean, look at this shit, right? Look how they've bent them and stuff, right? Um, although that's probably okay, and you can see that none of these look are screwed on properly. Um, yeah, this is fucking irritating. But anyway, um, let's go look at these panels from the other side. So this is that set of panels. Uh, first one down here, across here, up here. And I've had a good look at them. I'm not going to bother filming much. Um, nothing seems wrong to me. Um, let's go back and focus on that connector. So, I can see that this is the negative terminal of the first panel in the array. Actually, that would be probably the last panel, I guess. Anyway, and it comes down here, and it goes into here, and then they've made this extension cable uh, to go back to the power con. Um, so, all of the panel connections in the array look fine. Uh, you can see them here. Of course, these look much better and healthier because they're factory made. Um, no issues with those. They come already uh, assembled with the unit. Um, so, uh, not sure whatever this bell end did. Um, I guess he would have hooked up the array and then ran the cable from the power con already connected to here and then plugged it in, something like that. Um, yeah, whatever he did, he fucked it up. So, 
I'm not sure if this side of the connector is good. This is the factory um, connector on the last or, or first panel in the array. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bypass this last panel and I'm going to connect it straight from uh, the second panel uh, using my new cables uh, into the power converter and we'll see um, if I get a reading. If I do, then you know chances are uh, this is our issue. So I tried to take this connector apart but I can't, it's just too fucked up. Uh, it must be completely fused together inside. So this side of the connector is the negative of the first panel in this array, or last whatever, and the positive side of this panel goes to the negative side of this panel. Um, so the only way now uh, to completely isolate this from the loop is the negative side of this panel, instead of going up into the next panel, uh, is now going into my new cable. So this is the uh, new cable. And what I really want to do is to connect uh, this into the negative terminal of the power con. Um, but of course I can't because it, um, it's a screw terminal and it's a shame to cut these off. Um, I should have bought some of these connectors anyway and I could have easily done that, but never mind. Um, instead of using uh, this extension cable, all I'm going to do is on the next array, I just undid a few cable ties, and this is the extension cable going into the negative terminal from this array. So I'm going to disconnect uh, the second array as well, and uh, borrow uh, this extension cable, and then I'll just have to swap the negatives here, um, and we should get a reading. So just to figure out uh, which array is now disconnected that I'm going to borrow the cable from, let's flip breaker one, and there's no signal. So circuit number one is now offline, so this must be the one which I just disconnected to borrow the cable from. Number three should be unaffected, turn it on, and we start to get a reading. So let's turn off number three. Okay, good. So now I need to swap uh, the negative terminal from here into here and then I can reuse this extension cable and I should have a complete circuit. So you see I just swapped the cable over so now I'm just borrowing this extension cable for circuit number two. Okay so here's the moment of truth. We've bypassed this panel because this one has the bad connector on it and the other side of this bad connector is our extension cable to go back to the power con. So instead, we've connected our new cable to the second panel, so we're totally skipping this panel and this cable here. And then this negative lead is going into the borrowed extension cable from the other circuit, which is now plugged into the negative side of uh, input number two. So if everything worked, I should be able to flip this breaker on and we should see a reading here. So let's see if that worked. There we go. So now we know um, there's nothing wrong with this input, uh, there's nothing wrong with those panels, um, it's all that bad connector. So there we go, little bit of trial and error but we got there in the end. Um, all that's wrong is this bad connector. Uh, I've already started uh, putting all the cables back uh, nice and tidy. I've already put back circuit number one and uh, swap those leads back over so all I've got to do now is just cable tie these back up 10 minutes and I'm finished but I thought I'd show this one more time uh, before I strap it all back up you can see how deformed and twisted it is must have had a hell of a spark um, so basically from everything I've read um, it's like the three most simple basic rules of working with these connectors um, Number one, don't bend it so close. And number two, uh, this should be done up properly to make sure it's properly watertight. And then number three, don't connect the damn thing when it's under load. And it looks like not a single one of those things was done properly. So, I mean, whoever was did this, you're an absolute fucking bell end and you should be ashamed of yourself. Um, people who know me know that I'm always complaining about, you know, not having a proper job done and that I can do things better myself. 
uh, the favourite term in Japan is the uh, the professional, as they like to call it. Let the professional do it. Well, this is what the professional fucking does. Yeah, they don't care, um, and people wonder why I'm always bloody complaining. Just remember, the professional, nine times out of ten, who turns up to do the job, is only doing what he's doing because he's not good enough to do what you're doing. Simple as that. Anyway, anger aside, um, silver lining is uh, this is a super cheap fix. Um, I'll order some of these connectors and then next time I hear I'll just cut it here, cut it here, wire a new connector on, do it properly and then I'll strap it all back up and we should be good to go. Now I don't know if the spark that happened here would have damaged the control unit on this panel. I mean it's possible. Um, I have no idea. So I'll find out when I connect it back up. It's very simple. I'll do the connector here and if I have no reading then I'll just bypass that one panel quickly and figure that out. If I have to leave one panel disconnected that's no big deal. Um, another thing learned is that these bypass cables that I brought uh, they work great if I'm bypassing panels but I forgot that I might need to be bypassing an extension cable. So that's why I had to disconnect one of those arrays and then borrow it. So um, I need to order some of these uh, connectors anyway, so I'll order a bunch of them and I'll also order some of this 4mm cable um, and I'll make myself a bunch of utility cables, um, maybe a nice long one of these, like 5 or 6 metres, uh, maybe a couple, and then with these bypass cables and with some extension cables um, I can easily swap out um, anything I like um, at any time and I can test any connection uh, without having to do what I did here and you know pull everything apart but anyway um, you know it's not that big a deal uh, it's very simple stuff so there you go um, that's how to diagnose a problem um, I hadn't encountered this before uh, but you know now I'm learning <laughs>